Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. Monsignor. see that wretched girl, my mind turns to mud. I must do something. I must talk to her. Bring her here. Something. To settle once and for all a problem I can no longer tolerate. You are to help me. Oh, my dear Esmeralda. 
How can I ever tell you? Oh, Charlie, you dirty little beast. Why do you eat that awful rubbish? When in a few more minutes we shall be back in the Court of Miracles. I'm sure someone will have a big green apple or a loaf of bread for you. This is the only woman can make me feel this way. And soon she will be mine. Get her! Only one thing to do, I suppose. <laughs> you black... Let go of that woman. Somebody help me. <laughs> Arrest that man. Try anything like that again and I'll ride straight over you. Take him away. Captain Phoebus de Chateaupère at your service, mademoiselle. Oh, Captain. Captain, I thank you so much. No need for thanks. It was my duty, young lovely. Oh, Captain, you're so brave. You sound to me as if you've recovered from your fright. Are you able to continue your journey? I am, thank you. I live not far from here, in the Court of Miracles. That is an odd name for a nest of thieves and beggars. We're not all thieves, as you say. I work very hard for my living. <laughs> I do believe you. But in any case, it's of no account. I must be on my way. Please, Captain Phoebus, don't go. I wish you a good evening, pretty young maid. We must not delay. Oh, Phoebus. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful man. Oh, Phoebus. Phoebus. Charlie, have you ever heard such a beautiful name? Oh, poor wretch that I am. I think I've lost her. This could happen to no one except me. Poor Pierre Gringoire whose destiny, it seems, is always to stand aside while another snatches the opportunity from under his very nose. Oh, fate is so cruel. I understand all too well that a poet must suffer for his art. Good evening to you, sir. A gentleman as fine as you could surely spare a penny for a starving man. I'm but a penniless poet. Great Lord, you cannot mean that. Had I my sight, I know that I should be dazzled by your fairness of face. A fairness matched only by your generosity. Oh, I thank you for your turn of phrase. I wonder which of us is the true poet. A fine young man like you must surely keep a purse under that elegant apparel. Elegant apparel? These rags that saw their better days ten years ago? I should warn you, sir. It is not wise to withhold a favour from a man in these parts. There are many who would slit your throat for less. You can walk. And I can see when it suits me to. And I can run faster than any I know.
Delightful evening this has turned out to be. Look, friends, we have a visitor. Welcome, King. What an honor. Delighted to see you. Please make yourself at home. As king of this small nation, it is for me to bid you welcome to the Court of Miracles, young sir. You say you are king? I am Clopin, the supreme ruler of these people. But to you, I am your majesty. Yes, sir, I understand. Your Majesty. Your Majesty! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, uh, Your Majesty. Much better. <laughs> now we'll hear your defence. My defence? I haven't been accused of anything. <laughs> we can find something easily enough. What about trespassers? Uh, trespassers? What about trespassers? If I am guilty of such an offence, it is not with intent. Ah, your Majesty! Ah, your Majesty! What's intent got to do with it? I didn't intend to be born a beggar, yet all of Paris judges me guilty for it. And without the courtesy of a trial, even. These days, it is enough for the magistrates that one could appear to be guilty. But, but, but your Majesty... I have made no such judgment of you. You are a Parisian, are you not? Uh, are you not? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Then you are as guilty as the rest of this town for misjudging me and my friends. Uh, that's a fair enough trial. Uh, we have a god judged and found you. I don't think I understand. What will you do with me? <laughs> oh, my sentence will be as fair as your trial. You have a choice. You may be hanged immediately. Which is quite quick and nearly painless. Or you can join my family, become one of us. In which case, you die a thousand times over, a little each day. I think I would prefer the second choice. I will join you. Very well. Bring in the ringing man. I should surely fall and break my neck. You do as I say, else you'll be up there in the dummy's stead. <laughs> now, let's see whether our new friend is worthy of life as a beggar. You are to remove from the ringing man's pocket the purse he's carrying without sounding one of those thousand bells. I... I don't think I can, Your Majesty. The penalty for failure is death. <laughs> if one bell rings, you have failed the test. <laughs> What is so amusing? Ah, my dear little Esmeralda, you're just in time for a hanging. What is his crime? He trespassed into the court of miracles. I offered him his life should he prove himself worthy of joining our happy little group. But he failed the test. 
You cannot hang him for that. We must abide by the rules, little sweet. Hand me the noose. I know of another rule. Which is? One of the women can marry him. Then he'll be one of us. Ha <laughs> ha quite right. Now, who should that be? Would you like to marry him, old event? Nah, too thin for me. Too <laughs> thin. Oh, then, how about you? My husband wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's going to save him. Where's that noose? <clears throat> you didn't ask me. You, Esmeralda? Would you marry him? If it saves him from a hanging, yes. As I said, we must abide by the rules. <coughs> Hand me that jug. We have no use for ceremony. Smash this on the floor and the woman is yours for four years. It is your duty to feed and clothe her until this contract expires. Oh, yes, Your Majesty, yes. Yes, indeed. <coughs> Now, get out of here. We have drinking to do. Come with me. Oh, dear sweet lady, this is so much more than I deserve. Quite so. And for that reason, I'm sure you'll understand when I tell you that this marriage is in name only. I did what I did to save you from being hanged. No other reason. My heart belongs to another. Oh. Have you ever heard of the name... Phoebus, what does it mean? It's a Latin word meaning sun. Phoebus Apollo was the Roman sun god. Phoebus, a god. That's right. My handsome sun god, Phoebus. Open up immediately. It is your Archbishop. Oh, forgive me, my lord. Would you not prefer me to come outside? This room is not very comfortable. It is quite sufficient for my purposes. Let me in. So, the rumors are true. You are experimenting with alchemy. Alchemy, my lord? You are said to be searching for the chemical which will turn base metal into gold. Not I, my lord. What use would a priest have for gold? That is precisely what I asked myself. If I should find your lie... My lord, I am a man of the church. I would not lie. I certainly hope not. But that's not what I came here for anyway. That hunchback you adopted, the bell ringer. Ah, uh, uh... Yes, my lord. He has been arrested for attempted kidnap. Surely not. You know nothing of this. Oh, no, I swear, my lord, I am ignorant of the whole matter. I am relieved to hear that because he is to stand trial tomorrow. I don't want anything said in that courtroom which could reflect badly on this cathedral. I'm sure we can rely on his loyalty, my lord. I want you to go along there to make sure of that. But, my lord, my very appearance in the court would implicate me in this terrible thing. Do you not think so? I thought you might like to testify in his defense. I think it might be wiser to let the fellow pay his penalty. And when that's done, we can all forget about it. Hmm. Very well. But mark this. I will not tolerate anything that could bring this hallowed place into disrepute. I know that, my lord. And that includes stories of my archdeacon dabbling in alchemy. Uh, yes, my lord. Good night, Dom Frollo. Uh, good night, my lord archbishop. <laughs> My Lord President, 
We have come to... My Lord President. My Lord. Yes, Monsieur Samalou. We have come to the case of Cosimodo, bell ringer of Notre Dame. <laughs> A little slower, my lord prosecutor. I missed half of that. Shall I repeat myself? No need. I heard enough. Go on. This man is accused of consorting with witches and sorcerers and of conspiring with them to kidnap a young woman for evil purposes. A witch, eh? Hmm. Bring her in. My lord, may I speak? Haven't had a burning for weeks, it seems. Oh, hurry up. It is not a witch. It is a young man. Can we not burn young men? <laughs> Prisoner Cosimodo of Notre Dame. Well, Hunchback, what's your name? I can't hear you. I'm deaf. Very well. And your age? Uh, Cosimodo? <laughs> <laughs> and your address? I think I am 20 this year. <laughs> Quiet! Are you trying to make a mockery of this call? <laughs> I know just the right way to teach you some respect. A bell ringer, sir. <laughs> Will you still continue to insult me? At Notre Dame, sir. <laughs> This is too much! Take him out to the Place de la Grave and flog him! Jolly, who will perform wondrous tricks to delight and amaze you. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful lady. Come with me. Good afternoon, Jolly. Could you tell me the time, please? Oh? So you say it's four o'clock? Is that right? Now, could you tell me who ordered the flogging of that poor man over there? Oh, Jolly. Do you mean to say it was the president of the court? <laughs> Now tell us, who was the sun god of ancient Rome? The 
Stoke spelled Phoebus. Grandpa, it's your turn now. Show these people what you have learned. Oh, oh dear. I have something I must do. Did you enjoy my little show, Great Lord? I saw so little of it, really. I was watching you all the time. called Eve and the Apple. It's the small one next to the bridge. I'll be there at seven. I shall count the minutes till then. It seems we'll be eating supper alone tonight, Jolly. Excuse me, good sir. Did you say something? Rumor has reached my ears that you have married the gypsy girl. That rumor is correct. Well, I must say that for a man newly wed to the most beautiful woman in Paris, you have an uncommonly miserable expression on your face. Wed I might be, but in name only. She has eyes for no one but the Captain Phoebus. You know that for sure? Why do you ask? I shall speak to Esmeralda on your behalf. Explain to her the meaning of the holy vows of matrimony. Oh, there were no holy vows. Then you are not truly married. Oh, I suppose not. Really? Well, in that case, I can only appeal to her to give you the chance to prove yourself the man she really wants. Too late. She has a meeting with Phoebus this very evening. How do you know that? I heard them arranging it. Then I shall go too. I shall plead with her. Make her see that what she's doing is wrong. Oh, praise be. You are no ordinary priest. You must be a saint. Now tell me where this meeting will take place. This is a wonderful way to say hello. Oh, Phoebus, god of the sun. Come on, wake up. Get up. You two, take that body out of here. Is he dead? No, not Phoebus. Too late for tears, you little witch. You'll hang for this. No, I didn't kill him. I suppose the devil just flew in through the window and did it. Yes. Oh, Phoebus, my dear one. There is a devil in this room, all right, and the courts will know what to do about you. We were on patrol, as always, down near the tavern called Eve and the Apple. Dirty little pigsty that it is. Not the sort of place a gentleman would take a nice young lady. Get on with your story. Yes, sir. We heard a scream came from an upstairs room, the one with no windows and only one way in, up the stairs. We ran straight up there. Uh, did you see anyone come out of the room? No, sir, nor did we pass anyone on the stairs. Tell my Lord President what you saw in the room. That woman there, the witch, she'd lured the captain into her web and stabbed him so that she could rob him. Sir, that is not true. Are you going to tell us again that a demon suddenly materialized? And being in a playful mood, decided to run Captain Phoebus through with a blade. I didn't say he was playful. He was very serious. And so am I. I am also becoming quite impatient with your lies. My lord, it is plainly apparent that this lying will continue, no matter what evidence is put before this court. 
I feel bound to demand a confession by the application of torture. Oh, no! No, my lord, you couldn't put me into the torture chamber. Please, please. Will you now, then, tell us the truth? I have told you the truth so many times. That the devil appeared before your very eyes? Yes, my lord. Then you are damned. The devil only materializes before his own kind. Add a charge of witchcraft to the other and take her to the torture chamber. Oh, no. Please, please, no. Have mercy on me. She has freely admitted everything, my lord. I have her full confession of the murder. A confession of murder, yes. But I believe she is also a sorceress. The penalty for murder is death by hanging. But witches must be burned at the stake. We will note that she has been found guilty of the first offence and now proceed with the trial for witchcraft. <laughs> What do we have by way of evidence? These, my lord. <laughs> With these instruments, she can control the mind and soul of this poor creature. <laughs> Show me. I'm not entirely familiar with the code she uses, but it is something like this. of this vile wretch. She has caused the goat to spell out the name of her victim. I need see no more. There could be no plainer demonstration of the workings of her evil mind. Stand to hear your sentence. Wait. like that won't help you, my dear. In fact, there is only one thing left that will. You stabbed Phoebus. You and I both know that, but I'm not going to tell anyone, and in a few minutes you won't be able to. You cannot let me die for a crime I didn't commit. That is why I am about to offer to save you. I shall take you into my care, thereby accepting all responsibility for cleansing your soul of these demons. 
You shall live with me in the cathedral, far from temptation and far from the people out here who would harm you. I would prefer to die. That is precisely what you will do, and for even less reason than you think. Look over there. It's Phoebus, and he's alive again. Not again, you superstitious little fool. He never was dead. Then I am to die for a murder that never was committed. Phoebus? Phoebus? He can't hear you. Or perhaps he doesn't want to. If Phoebus would ignore me, I might as well be dead. for this woman. She is so ridden with evil, she refuses to do penance. Proceed with the execution! I shall remember that. But what are you going to do with me? You needn't worry about me. I would never do anything to hurt a kind and beautiful lady like you. You were the one who gave me water when I was flogged. I don't believe you could kill anyone. I believe you are innocent. But I was judged guilty. And if I ever step outside this place, they will take me and hang me. Oh, what can I do? I am your prisoner now. Not a prisoner. This cathedral is so big, you can walk around it for hours without touching the same ground twice. And as for me, I know the effect this ugly body has on people. I know I am repulsive. But don't worry, you'll never need to see me unless you choose to. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? That I could be as silly as all the others, judging you ugly because of your face, never seeing what is truly beautiful, your soul. I am quite used to it. It hardly bothers me at all. I have only one regret. I am so sorry I was given this one eye. But surely one eye is better than none at all. No. If I had none at all, I should not be able to see the way 
I make people's flesh crawl when they look at me. That will be no problem for me. You sleep now. I'll come back later with some food. will screaming do, do you think? Why are you doing this to me? What have I done that you persecute me? I'll tell you what you've done, you little vixen. You have bewitched my mind, distracted me from my studies, filled my nights with useless dreams. Not I. I've only seen you once or twice. I, I don't know you. But I know you. I've seen you day after day, flaunting yourself in the cathedral square, driving sane men to madness with your dancing and laughing. I can't help what others think of me. It's not my fault. No, it is not. It is the fault of the demon that possesses you. Your only salvation is to repent. Accept my guidance. I will save you from the fires of hell. The only demon I know is in this room with me right now. I'll never do what you want. Then be prepared to die. No! What's this? Have you forgotten who I am? What I've done for you? Can you not see what evil there is in this woman? That she can turn servant against master? Turn you, who owe your very existence to me, against the man who adopted you, raised you, educated you, employed you? I'm sorry. 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 This will be your last act of sorcery in this life. You have refused my offer of salvation. Now prepare yourself for my curse upon you. A curse that guarantees that if I cannot have you, no other man ever shall. talk to me for a little while. I get so lonely being here by myself all day. I am sorry, but at least you're safe here. Frollo cannot be trusted, and this is the only place I can keep a watch over you. I know that, but I would so like to be able to go out in the sun just for a short time. You mustn't leave this room. It's not safe. But I feel I shall suffocate. I have a way to cheer you up. I'll play you a beautiful song with my friends. Do you mean the bells? Yes, I do. I'll make them sing the way they've never done before. They'll be so happy to play for such a beautiful lady.
that noise? There must be a parade in the square. I can't miss this. I can climb up to the tower without anyone seeing me. that I was. That child up there neither murdered me nor any other man. You would have executed an innocent woman. She has committed no sin in her life except to be born beautiful. And you, my dear Cosimodo, are guilty of the same crime. No matter that your body is not perfect, inside you are the most beautiful innocent man who was ever born. 